Jana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanina Tesmai Shri Gurubi Namaha Namaam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Bhuravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shanyavadi Paschachyate Satarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the Bhagavad Gita. And today we're going on to chapter number 7. And here is Gita Mahatmya, verse number 7. Ekam Shastram Devaki Putra Gitam Eko, Eko Devo Devaki Putra Eva Eko Mantra Stasya Namami yan, Yani Karma Pi Ekam Tasya Devasya Seva There need be only one holy scripture the Divine Gita, sung by Lord Sri Krishna. Only one worshipable Lord, Lord Sri Krishna. Only one mantra, His holy name. And only one duty, devotional service, unto the supreme worshipable Lord, Sri Krishna. Archana. <laughs> บทสรุปที่เสร็จเหมือนกันนะคะในนี้เนี่ยได้ตรัสไปว่าเอ่อถ้าเกิดว่าจะให้พูดถึงคําปิตเวทที่สักหนึ่งคําปีเนี่ย
असंशय सम्रम जस्तृण The supreme personality of God had said, "Now hear, O son of Prita, how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of Me, with mind attached to Me, you can know Me in full, free from doubt." แปลบุคลิกภาพสูงสุดแห่งพระเจ้าตรัสว่าโอ้โอรสพระนางพิชาเบื้องต้นเธอจงฟังว่าปฏิบัติโยคะด้วยจิตสำนึกที่สมบูรณ์ในข้าและด้วยจิตยึดมั่นต่อข้าอย่างไรเธอจึงสามารถรู้ถึงข้าโดยสมบูรณ์ปราศจากความสงสัย So Lord Krishna is describing how to think of how to think of him. พระชากำลังจะอธิบายนะคะว่าเราเนี่ยควรที่จะระลึกถึงพระองค์อย่างไรได้อย่างไร And the bhakti yoga process begins by hearing. The shravanam is the first step of the bhakti yoga. So therefore, Krishna had said, "Touch Shrinu, touch Shrinu." The meaning to hear from Krishna. We have to hear what Krishna is saying. And our mind, within the mind, we want to think of Krishna. We want to become attached to Krishna. We want to have full consciousness of Krishna, and to do that, we have to hear about Krishna. In the Shrimad Bhagavatam, it describes the power of hearing. It says, "Shrinvatam swakata Krishna punya shravana kirtana." Said, so just simply by hearing about Krishna, that is an, it's a, a spiritually uh, pious activity, which cleanses the heart. ในสิริมาบอกว่าจำนะคะได้อธิบายถึงความสําคัญของการฟังไว้ว่าแค่จากการที่เราเนี่ยฟังเกี่ยวกับพระชาเนี่ยมันถือว่าเป็นผลเป็นบุญที่จะทําให้จิตใจของเราเนี่ยบริสุทธิ์ขึ้น So it's really important anybody who's interested to be the devotee and to practice bhakti yoga they have to hear regularly about Krishna. And hearing about Krishna means we can hear Krishna himself speaking the Bhagavad Gita, or we can hear about Krishna and Krishna's different energies and incarnations in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So these two books are very important. They are both representing Krishna. One is Krishna's words, and the other is about Krishna. So as we said, bhakti yoga begins with hearing. When we hear, then afterwards, then we chant. Kirtan comes. So we hear, and then we chant, and then we, if we hear nicely and chant nicely, then we will remember Krishna. Then smaranam comes. So you can see how bhakti yoga progresses from hearing to chanting, then to remembering. Okay, we'll go ahead to the next verse. This is another famous verse. 
Manushanam Sahashreshu Kaschidjatati Sedaye Yatatam Apisedanam Kaschinmam Veti Tatpata Out of many thousands among men, one may endeavour for perfection, and of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. จากหลายๆพันคนอาจมีหนึ่งคนที่พยายามเพื่อความสมบูรณ์และจากพวกที่บรรลุถึงความสมบูรณ์ผู้ที่รู้จักท่าตามความเป็นจริงยังหาได้ยาก So out of many many people in the world only a few are interested in perfection จากหลายๆพันคนนะคะแค่บางคนเท่านั้นที่เขาเนี่ยจะมีความสนใจ And, you, and for them, that perfection may simply be understanding that they're not the body. They simply understand that they're a soul. So we know not many people are able to realize or to understand that they're a soul. Most people are just in the platform of the body. They, they're just not much different from the animal. The animals eat and we also eat. The animals sleep and we also sleep. The animals mate, we mate. The animals defend, we defend. And if we don't inquire about spiritual life, about the purpose of life, then we're no different from the animal. So, so out of thousands of people, one may endeavor for perfection. That means they know they're not the body, they understand I'm a soul. And, if, and for those who have realized that they're not the body, that they're a soul, Hardly one of them will know about Krishna and understand Krishna in truth. So you can understand from this verse that the pure devotees are very rare. It's easier, to, it's easy enough to understand we're not the body, it's not so difficult, but to understand Krishna, that's much more difficult. We see Krishna, sometimes he's a, here, you can see in the picture, he's the chariot driver for Arjuna, and other times he's the son of Mother Yashoda, and Mother Yashoda is tying him up. And so it's even bewildering for demigods to see Krishna. Even great demigods like Lord Brahma and Indra and Shiva, some, they become bewildered trying to understand Krishna. So devotional to, to become the devotee is very rare. All right, here's a nice verse from the seventh chapter. So many nice verses in this chapter. 
Madhaparataram nanyat kenchit asti dananjaya mai sarvam idam proktam sutre manigana O conqueror of wealth, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. O Pushana Kwam Brambrua, Nemi Sakatam Dai, Nia Pai Kwa Ha, Tuk Sing Tuk Ya, Kam Nak Du Ti Ka, Chek Chen Pai Muk, Ti Tuk Roy, Yunai Senda. Lord Krishna is giving an example here, an analogy by which we can understand how he is present in the universe. You, you can see in the illustration there's a string of pearls, a string of beads or pearls. How are they all held together? There's a thread which goes through the middle. Mm, just like devotees, we wear neck beads, we wear the toe seed bead around our neck. And the idea, when we wear the toe seed beads, you don't see the thread which all the beads are on. But if there's no thread there, then the beads are just going to fall off. The beads won't, they, they won't stay together. So Krishna uses this example to explain his position. He said everything rests on him. That all the planets, everything in the universe is all resting on him. And then Krishna, we can see Krishna has made a statement here. He said, there is no truth superior to me. Now, only Krishna says this. You will never find anywhere that Shiva says this, or Brahma says this, or Durga says this, and no, none, none of the other devas or gods or goddesses ever say that there is no truth superior to me. This is Lord Krishna's supreme position, that he is above everything. But he's, it's very bewildering, because we know Lord Krishna comes in a, in a human-like form. So we should understand that it's not that Krishna has taken a form like us, but we have taken a form like Krishna. And while Krishna has that human-like form, at the same time, his form is transcendental. It's not material. Krishna's form is Satsit Ananda, it is eternal, full of, full of bliss and full of knowledge. 
ภาวรากายของคริชนานะคะเป็นสัจจิตอนันต์เนี่ยนั่นก็หมายความว่าเปรียบไปด้วยความเพลิดเพลินสุขพระองค์ทรงมีรูปลักษณ์แล้วก็พระองค์ทรงเป็นอมตะ Just the opposite of the form we have. Our forms are temporary. They're miserable and full of ignorance. Okay. So we we'll go ahead to the next slide. Seven fifteen. Lord Krishna is describing now. Because Lord Krishna had described how people don't surrender to Him, so He's telling us who are these people who don't surrender. So it's mentioned here: those miscreants who are grossly foolish. Who are lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons, do not surrender unto me. บอกว่าพวกที่โง่เขลามากต่ำสุดในหมู่มนุษย์ถูกความหลงขโมยเอาความรู้ไปและเป็นผู้มีส่วนร่วมกับธรรมชาติมารที่ไม่เชื่อในองค์พระขวานจะไม่สิโรราต่อค่า So they're mentioned here there are four kinds of people who don't surrender to Krishna ตัวมีได้ที่บายถึงบุคคลสี่ประเภทที่จะไม่สิโรราต่อ Krishna And they're all described but there's one word which describes all of them the word is duskritina Now Sukrina, Sukritina means perform pious activity, and Duskritina means they're sinful people. Right, Sukriti. Sukriti means you've done some pious activities. And Duskriti means you haven't done any pious activities. So Krishna describes these four people. The first one is described by the word mudha. Mudha means he's a foolish person, like a donkey. And the donkey is a very foolish animal. They will carry the heavy load. They will carry a heavy load every day just to eat some grass. Right. So the the donkey is thinking, if I don't carry the load, I won't get any grass to eat. But grass is growing everywhere. He doesn't have to carry the load. In the same way, materialistic people are thinking, "I have to work. I have to work hard. I don't have time to chant Hare Krishna. I don't have time to read Bhagavad Gita." I have to work. I have to fill my belly. I have to get food for myself and my family. So I have to. Work. I don't have time for all of this. What you people are doing, chanting and dancing. So this is like the mudha, the foolish person. 
สําหรับบุคคลประเภทนี้นะคะเราจะเรียกว่ามูดาหรือว่าบุคคลผู้โง่ค่ะ Then the second kind of person is called nara dhamma, meaning the lowest among mankind. So these people are like people. They may come to devotional service and they begin to do devotional service for some time. But then they give it up. And they think, "Oh, yeah, I don't want to be bothered anymore. I've done it. I've done it enough. I'm not interested anymore. I've lost interest." And they're thinking, "I want to go back to my bad habits. My." Drinking meat, drinking alcohol, and smoking and eating meat. I want to go back to my old friends and do all these things. But they'd already done devotional service for some time, but they just just decide to give it all up and leave. They want to go back to their material life. Another kind of Naradama is somebody who may be born in a, a pious family, a pious religious family. And their family gave them a good upbringing. They taught them some basic principles. But they just give it all up. They just think, "Oh, it's not important." My mother and father—they believe in this. I don't. I'm not interested. I'm not going to follow. So these people are very foolish. They're called nara dhamma, the lowest of mankind. They have the opportunity for spiritual life. But they won't take it. Then the third kind of person is described by the words Maya Aparita Gyana, meaning one whose knowledge is stolen by illusion. So these kind of people, they don't like to hear the message of the scriptures from the bona fide acharyas. Instead, they will. Speculate. They'll give their own philosophy. And they think, oh, gods like Krishna and Rama, they're just ordinary people. They're just ordinary men. They they can't be the supreme lord. The supreme lord has to be somebody with four arms. Then he's God. Or so they will say, God cannot have any form because we have a form. So if God has a form, he must be like us. So God must be without form. And they say so many nonsense things. They say 
God is light. And if you ask them, where does the light come from? They cannot say. So their knowledge is stolen by illusion. They cannot understand the scriptures. And then the fourth class of people who don't surrender, they're called Asura Bhavam Ashritaha, meaning who partake of the atheistic nature of demons. So they're asura, means demoniac. They have the demoniac nature. They cannot understand that God is a person who we should surrender to. Just like there was a great king in the times of Lord Krishna, 5,000 years ago, there was one Asura king named Jarasandha. And he was such a, he, he, he would follow the Vedas, but he hated Krishna. And he wanted to kill Krishna. It's a big asura, a big demon. Finally, he was killed by Bhima with the help of Krishna. But people who are atheistic, who say there is no God, this world is unreal, the, the, these people, we will read, we will hear later on, when we do chapter 16, we'll hear about the demoniac nature. They say, and the, the, these people say, the world is unreal and the only purpose of life is for sense gratification. So these people are all uh, miscreants, they're described, duskritina, they never surrender to Krishna. All right, so then Krishna describes four kinds of people who do surrender to him. And these people are described uh, Sukritino Arjuna, Jana Sukritino Arjuna, they're all pious people. So they're also in four categories, four kinds of people who surrender. And the first one is Artha, Artho, Artha, and the meaning one who is in distress. This is the most this is the most common because in the modern world many people are in distress. We know because of so many things, people have no job, have no money, how can I live? We're in great distress. 
ูความว่าจะเครียดเรื่องการทํามาหากินนะคะว่าเออไม่มีงานเลยแล้วจะอยู่ยังไงหาเงินได้ยังไง Somebody's in distress. My girlfriend left me. She went away with another man. We're in distress. บางคนก็เครียดหรือว่ามีความทุกข์เนื่องจากบอกว่าคู่รักเนี่ยโอ้ยเลิกกับฉันแล้วก็ไปมีคนใหม่ Somebody stole my car. Somebody stole my money. We're in distress. บางคนก็เครียดเนื่องจากรบรถของตนถูกขโมยไปหรือว่าเงินถูกโกงหรือถูกขโมยไป So you can see in the illustration on the top left, there's an, the picture there. You see the elephant; he's fighting with a crocodile. This elephant's name is Gajendra. So he's fighting with this crocodile. And they're in the water, and the water is the home of the crocodile. ทั้งคู่นะคะกำลังต่อสู้กันอยู่แล้วก็ได้ต่อสู้ในแม่น้ำนะซึ่งในน้ำเนี่ยเป็นบ้านของจระเข้ And so, because they're in the water, the crocodile is becoming stronger and stronger, and Gajendra is getting weak and weaker. He can't get out of the water. He can't get away from the crocodile. He's got his leg. แล้วช้างนะคะเวลาอยู่ในน้ำนะเขาจะไม่แข็งแรงมากขนาดนั้นแต่ว่าจระเข้นะคะเนื่องจากเป็นบ้านของเขาเขาก็แข็งแรงขึ้นแล้วในการต่อสู้เนี่ยช้างก็อ่อนแอลงจระเข้ก็แข็งแรงขึ้น So the elephant is in great distress but somehow in his previous life he had been a devotee but he had been cursed to become an elephant แต่ช้างตัวนี้นะคะชาที่แล้วเนี่ยเขาว่าเป็นสาวกแต่ว่าเขาเนี่ยได้รับคำสาปให้มาเป็นช้างในชาตินี้ So he remembered a mantra he had learned in his previous life เพราะฉะนั้นเขาก็ระลึกถึงบทมนต์ที่เขาเคยเรียนรู้ในชาติที่แล้วได้ And he recited that mantra and when he said that mantra you can see Lord Vishnu is coming on the back of Garuda So, so, so Gajendra, he took a lotus flower in his trunk and he offered it to Lord Vishnu. So this is one example. Somebody in distress, and they surrendered to Krishna. And then the next kind of person who surrenders, we say Arto Jignasu. Jignasu means the inquisitive. So if you look at the picture on the bottom left, you can see it. One sage is sitting in front of many, many other great sages, and he's giving a lecture to them all. He's talking to them all. Yes, we can see that. นักปราบคนหนึ่งเนี่ยเขานั่งอยู่แล้วก็จะมีนักเรียนนะคะที่คอยนั่งฟังอยู่ข้างล่างเต็มอยู่ So this took place 5,000 years ago at the beginning of the Kali Yuga อันนี้นะคะเป็นสถานการณ์ที่เกิดขึ้นเมื่อ 5,000 ปีที่แล้วก่อนตอนเริ่มกาลียุค Because all the sages and yogis they knew Kali Yuga was beginning and they knew it's a very inauspicious time people are very fallen and sinful พอพวกท่านทราบดีนะคะว่ากาลกาลียุคเนี่ยกำลังจะเริ่มขึ้นแล้วแล้วเป็นอะไรที่ไม่ดีซะเลยเพราะว่ามันเป็นผู้คนเนี่ยจะเน้นกิจกรรมบาปแล้วก็จะทำกิจกรรมบาปกันมาก So they all went to this holy place and this one man was selected to speak to them all and they and they put questions to him and he answered all their questions แล้วก็ได้เขาก็ได้เลือกนักปราชญ์ท่านหนึ่งมาเพื่อที่จะตอบคำถามแล้วก็สามารถบรรยายได้แล้วทุกคนก็ตั้งคำถามกับท่าน
And in this way, by get, as, asking questions, they became perfect. Then there's another person, Artarti. Artarti means the desire of wealth. So the picture is there on the top right. You can see there's a small boy, young boy. His name is Druva and he'd gone to the forest. So Druva was a very young boy, but he was very hurt, he was very insulted. His father had not been very nice to him and he was angry. So he went to the forest because he wanted to get a, a big kingdom. Alright, he was born in the Kshatriya family. So he wanted to get money, he wanted to get a big kingdom. And so his mother said, you should go to the forest. You'll find, you can find God there, He can help you. So Dhruva was in the forest for six months and he did great austerities and in, after six months the Supreme Lord came to him and blessed him. Right? And then one more kind of person who surrenders to Krishna are the jnani or those who are searching for knowledge of the Absolute. And the example of these jnanis who are searching for the knowledge of the Absolute are here the four Kumaras, the four sons of Lord Brahma. Right, the, the four Kumaras, they were the very first sons of Lord Brahma. And Lord Brahma asked them that he wanted them to get married. But they said, no, we don't want to get married. And so they told Lord Brahma, they said, we're just going to stay as young children. We will never grow up. Our bodies will never grow old. We'll just stay like young children. So although they're the first people, the first sons of Brahma, they're very, very old in the universe. They just look like little children. And they're searching, they want to get knowledge of the Absolute. So these are the four kinds of people, all very pious because they surrender to Krishna. Hmm. Oh, go ahead, we just have one more slide. Here you see, text number 19. Bahunam gyanmanamante gyanavam mam prapajyante vasudeva sarvamiti samahatma sadurlabha. 
After many births and deaths, he who is actually in knowledge surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that is such a great soul is very rare. หลังจากการเกิดและการตายหลายต่อหลายชาติผู้มีความรู้อย่างแท้จริงจะสิลราบต่อข้ารู้ว่าข้าคือแหล่งกําเนิดของแหล่งกําเนิดทั้งปวงรวมทั้งสรรพสิ่งที่เป็นอยู่ดวงวิญญาณผู้ยิ่งใหญ่เช่นนี้หาได้ยากมาก So in this verse, Lord Krishna is describing what is the goal of knowledge. ในสโลนี้นะคะกฤษณาอธิบายว่าจุดมุ่งหมายของความรู้เนี่ยแปลว่า Right, and in the, the we showed the text 16. It was saying four kinds of people are there. They're all pious, but Lord Krishna said of these four, the best one is the one who's searching for knowledge. So these other people who are in distress or who want wealth or inquisitive, they all have to get knowledge, and then they will never forget about Krishna. They will never give up devotional service. ประเภทอื่นนะคะจะเป็นแบบว่ามีความทุกข์อยากได้ความมั่งคั่งหรือว่าชอบถามคำถามอะไรส่วนพวกเขาเนี่ยจะต้องได้รับความรู้ก่อน If we come in distress, then when the distress goes, then we may give up Krishna consciousness. Or somebody may come to Krishna consciousness to get wealth or to get a kingdom. So when they get it, they may go away from Krishna. บางคนอาจจะมาหาคริสต์นาค่ะเพราะว่าอยากจะได้ความร่ำรวยความมั่งคั่งพอเขาได้สิ่งเหล่านั้นแล้วเขาก็อาจจะเลิกบูชาคริสต์นาไปได้ Somebody may be curious and they may have many questions but after a while they have no more questions they go away หรือบางคนนะคะก็อาจจะมีคําถามอยากจะรู้นู่นนั่นนี่แต่เวลาได้คําตอบแล้วคือละอยากจะรู้เฉยๆแต่ก็ไม่จะไม่อยากจะไปปฏิบัติอะไรเขาก็จะปล่อยไปได้ But if they come to the platform of knowledge, then they will not give up Krishna consciousness. แต่ถ้าเกิดเขาอยู่ในระดับที่มีปัญญาและมีความรู้เนี่ยพวกยานี่เขาจะไม่เลิกปฏิบัติ So it's very important. Devotees have to hear. They have to learn this philosophy. We have to learn this knowledge. We have to be convinced about this knowledge. But here you can you can see text nineteen. It says that simply by knowledge alone, you're not going to advance very quickly. It says here after many births and deaths, <laughs> then you take the path of knowledge will take many lifetimes before we may be, before we surrender. And we see it's also very rare. It said, "Mahat sa mahat masudur labaha." Such a great soul is very rare. It's very rare somebody surrenders to Krishna. By the path of knowledge, it's very rare. But if you take to the path of devotion, it's very easy. It's very quick and very easy. In, in this very lifetime, we can become perfect. 
ความสมบูรณ์ได้แค่ในชีวิตนี้ชีวิต We give the example if you want to go to visit somebody who lives on the twentieth floor if you walk up the stairs it takes a long time it's a lot of effort but if you go on the lift it's very quick ตัวอย่างเช่นนะคะสมมติเราอยากจะไปหาใครที่อาศัยอยู่ชั้น20หรือชั้น28กว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยใช้บันไดเลื่อนนะคะมันก็จะช้าแต่ถ้าเกิดเราใช้ลิฟต์เนี่ยมันก็จะเร็ว So if you take the path of knowledge it will take a long time but if you go by bhakti that's like going in the lift ถ้าเกิดเราเนี่ยไปตามระบบของความรู้นะคะค่อยๆศึกษาค่อยๆรู้แล้วไปมันก็เหมือนกับขึ้นบันไดแต่ถ้าเกิดเราไปโดยปฏิบัติบัคตี้เนี่ยเหมือนกับเราขึ้นลิฟต์ and what is that knowledge which we have to cultivate แล้วความรู้นั้นคืออะไรคะที่เราจะต้องเรียนรู้เนี่ย it's described here Vasudeva Sarvamiti we should know that Vasudev or Krishna is everything แล้วความรู้นั้นก็คือ So this was understood. You can see these two pictures. Here's Lord Brahma riding on his swan, and Lord Krishna was there with the cowherd boys in the forest of Rindal. Uh, so Lord, Lord Brahma was trying to understand how can this is Krishna? He's the supreme. He's my master. He just looks like a little boy. He's just playing with the bo other boys in the forest of Vrindavan. <laughs> เพื่อนเด็กเลี้ยงวัวด้วยกันแล้วก็นั่งอยู่อย่างนั้นเนี่ยพระพรมเกิดความสับสนว่าอันนี้น่าเป็นกฤษณะจริงเหรอเป็นพระผู้เป็นเจ้าสูงสุดจริงเหรอแล้วทำไมท่านถึงมาอยู่แบบนี้กับเด็กพวกนี้ได้ So Lord Brahma played a trick and he stole away all the cows, all of Krishna's cows, and then he took away all of Krishna's friends, all the cowherd boys, and Krishna was left alone. แล้วแล้วพระพรมนะคะก็เลยทดสอบโดยการที่ลักพาตัวเด็กน้อยเพื่อนเพื่อนของคริสนาทั้งหมดนะคะไปแล้วก็ให้คริสนาเนี่ยเหลืออยู่คนเดียว And so Lord Krishna understood this is a trick of Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma is playing a trick. So Lord Krishna expanded himself to take the place of all the cows and all the cowherd boys. แล้วคริสนาท่านก็อธิบายนะบอกว่าพอคือพอคริสนาเห็นเช่นนี้เนี่ยคริสนาก็เข้าใจเลยว่านี้เนี่ยเป็นสิ่งที่พระพรหมเนี่ยทรงกระทำ And Lord Brahma took them away just for a moment of his time, but one moment of Brahma's time was one year on this planet. So for one year, Krishna expanded himself to take the place of all the cowherd boys and all the cows, and nobody knew. Then after one year, Brahma came back, and he was surprised to see all the cows and all the cow herd boys were there. And he thought, "Well, what happened? I thought I took them all away. How could they all be there?" หลังจากพระพงศ์กลับมานะคะนายพอผ่านไปวันหนึ่งนะพระพงศ์กลับมาลองดูปรากฏว่าเอ้าคุณช่วยยังเล่นกับเพื่อนเพื่อนแล้วยังมีลูกวัวยังมีวัวทุกอย่างเหมือนเดิมเป็นไปได้ไงนะคะพระพงศ์ก็งงมาก And then Lord Brahma came and and then Krishna revealed himself. He showed that he was the super. He was there. All the cowherd boys were him, and all the cows were also him. That he showed that everything is actually him. Him. It's all an expansion of Krishna's energy. So Brahma was really humiliated, and he understood how great Lord Krishna is. Therefore, you see in the right. 
Lord Brahma is offering prayers and asking Krishna to forgive him. And he's understood that Vasudev Sarvamiti, that everything is Krishna and Krishna's energy. And, then this, and so the path of knowledge is very rare, but if you take the path of devotion, it's very nice, very wonderful. Alright, so if anybody hasn't got the Thai books, you may want to get the Thai books, you can get them from us. And here's the address, here's our center, Ram Kham Hang. And now time for questions. Any questions tonight? Um, Shaya Mataji? She has a question. Krishna Guru Maharaj Sanavatana, please accept my humble offices. อ่าณทีนี้เรียนบางทีตามมาจนถึงบทที่เจ็ดนะคะอ่าพี่มีคําถามอยากจะให้มหาราชอธิบายสั้นๆถึงการที่พี่อยากจะทําข้อมูลเ
Just like there are some countries where we go to where they don't allow, they're, they're not religious and people are, are indoctrinated into atheistic philosophy. So it's important for them to understand that there is a person behind the universe. That we, we speak about creation, that the world was created by someone. Just like just like you have a motor car, somebody built it. Or there's a you may you may have a mobile phone. Somebody has to make it. And similarly, when we look at the world, there are so many planets in the sky, and Earth is just one planet. Where did they come from? And ev everything is arranged very carefully. The sun rises at a certain time every day and it goes down, sets at a certain time every night. And there are different seasons throughout the year. There's the very hot season, there's the very wet season, the rainy season. So these things don't happen just by chance, it's all arranged. There's somebody who arranges all of this. So you have to understand there are different gods or personalities in who oversee these different affairs in the universe. And there's a supreme person in the universe behind everything. So if, some, if, if the people you're talking to can understand these things, then you can go on to present that that personality is also able to expand himself into the heart of all living entities. Just, you know, we talk about the life, the basic base of life, basis of life is coming from the heart. But where does the energy for the heart come from? So then we explain there's a spiritual particle which is the source of the energy in the body. So you have to try to introduce these kind of things gradually to people.
จึงความรู้พื้นทางแบบนี้ให้กับผู้คนได้มีความรู้ความเข้าใจที่ถูกต้อง And to help you convince these people, it's very good if they like kirtan, if they will chant the holy name. แล้วถ้าเกิดว่าจะสามารถให้ให้เขาเนี่ยยอมรับความรู้ตรงนี้หรืออะไรเงี้ยค่ะนี้นะคะก็ให้พี่ส่งเสริมให้เขาเนี่ยสวดพระนาม If they if they will take part in the chanting of the holy name, this will purify their heart and will make it easier for them to understand. ถ้าเกิดว่าเขาได้มีส่วนร่วมในการสวดภาวนาพระนามศักดิ์สิทธิ์นะคะก็จะทําให้ความบริสุทธิ์ในจิตใจเขาเนี่ยเพิ่มพูนขึ้นเขาจะมีความบริสุทธิ์มากขึ้นแล้วก็จะทําให้เขาเนี่ยสามารถเข้าใจความรู้ตรง And if they will also eat prasada. Which is the foodstuffs offered to Krishna, then that will also help them to understand the knowledge. So the the philosophy is not so much important in the beginning. What is important in the beginning is that they should like to chant Hare Krishna and they should enjoy prasada. ประจำปรับยานะคะยังไม่ได้เป็นสิ่งสําคัญมากสําหรับบุคคลที่มาเริ่มใหม่ๆสิ่งสําคัญสําหรับเขาเนี่ยจะเป็นในส่วนของพระนามนะคะแล้วก็การรับประทานประสาทการชื่นชอบประสาทน And if they enjoy these things, then gradually they can learn the philosophy. ถ้าเกิดเขามีความสุขกับสิ่งเหล่านี้นะมีความสุขกับเกียรติกับประสาทแล้วเขาก็ค่อยๆเรียนรู้ปรัชญาได้ Do you understand, c h a y Jaya, understand? Jaya, yes. So. Yes, Guru Maharaj, understand. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Thank you for your nice question. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Dhanavat Pranam. Yes, Prabhu. Ajay Ji, my Nepali Varala. Ajay Ji, Guru Maharaj. Ajay Ji, 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 Ajay Where it is mentioned that the people who are in the mode of uh, passion and ignorance cannot understand the Lord, but um, also the people who are in mode of goodness they cannot understand the Lord. Is that true, or he's just confused about that part? Yes, it's also true that even though somebody is in the mode of goodness, they may not be able to understand the Lord. You need to get the mercy of devotee to understand the Lord. The, the devotees who have understood the Lord, they can help others to understand the Lord. So, being in the mode of goodness is a help, but it's not enough. To understand, you, you still need to get the mercy of devotee. We, we see sometimes there are brahmanas; they're in the mode of goodness, they're pious, they're materially pious, but they may be very. Not they may not be devotees. They, they have their own philosophy. They may be just simply karma kandi brahmanas. They do ritualistic activities. 
ัวอย่างนะคะที่ให้ไว้ของบุคคลที่อยู่ในระดับความดีก็คืออย่างเช่นบรามนะซึ่งบรามนะเนี่ยอาจจะทําพิธีกรรมต่างๆอย่างที่พระเวทได้แนะนําไว้แต่ว่าวิธีเหล่านั้นอาจจะไม่ได้เกี่ยวกับการพิจารณาเสียสละใช้เลือก or they may be impersonalists they may not believe in the personal feature of the absolute truth Yeah, we see impersonalists. They're, you know, they can be very renounced and very detached from sense gratification. They can be very much in the mode of goodness, but they're not devotees. Ah, they're in the mode of goodness. But they can become devotees by the mercy of a devotee. Of course, it's not. They're not. It's not very easy to convince them. So they also need prasadam. They also need to hear the chanting of the holy name done by pure devotees. If you have a nice program of kirtan and if you have nice prasadam, then everyone will be happy. But if you just talk philosophy all the time, it's very difficult to convince people just by philosophy. Of course, of course, we have a philosophy, and we should know the philosophy. But we don't want to spend a lot of time. We don't want to spend all the time arguing philosophy with people. They should be. They have to be submissive. They have to be willing to hear. If they're not willing to hear, then it's very difficult. If they just argue with you, you just waste your time. In Kali Yuga, people don't like to admit they're wrong. Everybody thinks I'm right. So, God is both personal and impersonal. They're not wrong. We just have to understand there's another part to the absolute. He's impersonal, but he is also personal. So sometimes it's difficult to convince people about these things. But if they join in the kirtan and they take prasadam, then they get a lot of benefit. Okay. Any other question? Other than Krishna, sir, uh, Maharaj, there's a question from our medical student, Ruxana. I'm just in front of you. Ruxana, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Dana Vatana. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, I, I have this question that because some of my friends, they asked me when I, I said them like the heart. That the soul is situated in the heart, and we have soul and soul and the super soul. So they asked me like, what happens when someone undergoes the heart transplantation, and then they remove the heart that they had before, and they get the heart that is transplanted from another people? Then what? 
then they ask me like what happens to the soul that was before uh, like whether the soul gets exchanged or what happens to this so i was i, I could not answer them properly so maharaj could you please help me with this one yes yes oh, all right this question was um, brought up before uh, we explain just like if you have a motor car and you want to change the seat of the motor car you know you have a nice motor car but you want to put in a different seat for some reason so you take out one seat you put in a new seat but the driver of the car is the same so the same way changing the heart is like changing the seat in the bod in the car so you take out one heart you put in another heart the soul comes out of one heart it goes in the other heart อ่าเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเ
สำหรับปรัชญาของพวกเขาเนี่ยเขาจะคิดว่าบรัมมันเนี่ยสูงสุดแล้วแม้แต่กฤษณาก็มาจากบรัมมันเหมือนกัน So the atheistic Kapila philosophy is more widely known than the actual theistic philosophy of Sankhya. Mayavadi philosophy is also atheistic philosophy. Because they, they say ultimately everything is one. They say the world is unreal. Only the Brahman is truth. All right. You know, can understand what is this the sankhya of the Maya body? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, I've understood. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions? Archana, no more questions. Three Devi Gorangi Madhaji, she raised her hand. Okay. Hare Krishna, Sita Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance, sir. All glories to Sri Nakarupad. Uh, yeah, Guru Maharaj, why is it some people still like to believe in the Big Bang Theory whenever we try to talk to them about creation? That is my question. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> yeah. People are so fully you know, because. Uh, they think this is science, you see. They think the Big Bang Theory is scientific. And they think the teachings of the scriptures are just some uh, mythology. They don't take the scriptures as being real knowledge. <laughs> The Big Bang theory and then Darwin's theory and all of these things, they're all theories, no proof, they have no proof of anything. But people are, are taken in by it all because you know, people presenting these philosophies are big professors or they have a lot of material qualifications. And if we try to tell them about the soul and about God, they say, oh, this is just sentimental. They cannot under, they, they won't accept it. They think, you know, we don't, we're not, we're not scientific. So Srila Prabhupada had some disciples who were well qualified materially. They had completed their PhDs in scientific fields and he ordered them to preach to the scientists. And one of the devotees, under Prabhupada's instruction, he wrote a book, The Scientific Basis of Krishna Consciousness. Krishna 
And under Prabhupada's direction, they also established the Bhaktivedanta Institute, which was meant to preach to the scientists and the, the, the preaching to the Nobel Prize winners about the existence of spirit and how life doesn't come from chemicals. Uh, so the devotee in charge of this Bhaktivedanta Institute was His Holiness Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj and he met many Nobel Prize winners and he had conversations with them and they discussed about the Big Bang Theory and all these other theories. Swarup. So it's a very specialized field to preach to scientific people, to convince them about these things. You have to be scientific. You have to be. In, you have to know the field of science, and you have to be able to present Krishna consciousness in a scientific manner. Then we can convince them. <laughs> Of course, these people, they also need nice prasadam and nice chanting of Hare Krishna to be convinced. Yeah, just only, just only talking philosophy, sometimes you get nowhere. Just like one year, they had a scientific conference in Bombay, and many scientists came from America as well. They came, Nobel Prize winners, big people, they all came to Bombay to attend the scientific conference. So one of the devotees was taking one of the big Nobel Prize winners to the airport. He was going back to America and he asked him, so how did you like the conference? So he said, he said to the devotee, he said, you know what I've learned from this conference? He said, I've learned that I can be satisfied on a vegetarian diet. He said, I never knew. I, said, I could never imagine I could be so satisfied by just a vegetarian diet. <laughs> so this is preaching to scientists. It's difficult. Good prasada, very good preaching weapon. All right, so we will stop here tonight and we'll see you all tomorrow night. We'll go on yes. to chapter 8. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Go back to Vrinda Ki. Yeah.